In this video, I'm gonna be talking about how to animate action with strong acting. And as a bonus, I wanna show you guys a really cool free tool that I found. I'm an animator. I've worked on projects like Star Wars, Jedi Fallen Order, Death Stranding, and Crash Bandicoot 4. This channel is for artists who are hungry for inspiration and accountability, people who are interested in how movies are made, and anyone looking for a good story. Right now, we're at 144 subscribers. Thank you so much, everyone. Please subscribe and share with a friend that you think would find these videos interesting because it would really help out the channel. Let's start animating. My first piece of advice for your action shot is don't be cool and mess up. What I mean by this is a lot of times when I'm looking through animation and I see a really cool shot where someone is doing a double gainer backflip and kicking the bad guy in the face and then landing in a cool hero pose, I'm like, oh, cool, and then move on. And I quickly forget about it. If you wanna have really strong action shots, supporting it with good character and acting will make your audience never forget it. They'll see it and be like, whoa, cool. Then later they're like brushing their teeth and be like, that was a really cool shot. I remember, I wanna look at that again. They'll bring up their phone. What I mean by mess up is don't have your characters in your action shots be flawless. Have them slip, have them fall, have them overshoot and jump too far and like, oh, and almost fall. Whoa. That was crazy. Just have a bunch of boxes stacked up. There we go. <laughs> kind of like that. I didn't do that on purpose, I swear. If your hero is fighting with some sort of weapon, having them often regrip and adjust their stance, showing that they're kind of afraid because getting in a fight is scary, will bring strong acting to your shot. So I talked about the animation of someone doing a double gainer backflip flawlessly and kicking the bad guy in the face is cool, but forgettable. It's extremely complicated animation to do all of that. A real life action story that really connected to me that I think about all the time was a five-year-old that stepped in front of his sister to protect her from an attacking dog. And there was major consequences for that, but it was extremely heroic. And so think about the difference of these two stories. One is a hero does a double backflip to kick a bad guy in the face. The second one is a five-year-old stepping in front of his sister. This is the action, it's just this, that's it. So how can this be more memorable than the double gainer backflip? That leads me into my second piece of advice, is to have a clear why for the shot, give a character a need or a desire. If that actual story were to be animated, the clear why is a brother that loved his sister. He felt he needed to do it to protect her from harm. And this story is really interesting because the kid is five and obviously more vulnerable than an attacking dog. So having a character choose to do something that will put themselves at risk is extremely heroic and very memorable. And my last piece of advice is figure out who they are, their personality, their age, everything about them, and be specific and consistent. Because if you keep on changing their physicality, then people won't believe it. So how did I apply these rules to my shot? First, I shot some reference and totally forgot to turn on the light and to ask my wife to wear pants that aren't black. So now I don't really know what the pose is. Make sure you eat before you shoot reference. If you're hungry, you forget really basic stuff. <laughs> So for this action shot, it's basically her reacting to something that she did not expect at all and is really scared by. Humans have a freeze, fight, or flight reaction to intense situations. Freezing like animals pretending like they're dead, which is smart because predators get a lot of adrenaline by the chase. So if they see something running, then they chase after it. So freezing isn't necessarily a submission. So the first part of the shot is her freeze reaction to the head coming through the phone, which also builds great anticipation to the action to come, which is another thing, is make sure you build anticipation to the action. Set up what's gonna happen and hold it for a little bit. Let the audience read how the character feels about what's about to happen. The head is heavy, so she instinctually catches it and freaks out and throws it away. I find it an interesting 
interesting contrast to her being long distance and really, really wanting to be physically in the same room with her boyfriend. But this incident, technically she is, but she didn't expect it in this way where it's just ahead. Another great thing to think about is body language. I was reading a book while animating this. The book is called what everybody is saying. And it talks about how the most honest body part of the human body is our feet. If you're talking to someone and you wanna be nice, but you don't wanna to talk to, to them, oftentimes your feet are pointing towards the exit. So I posed her feet away from where she threw the phone in the head. And then another thing is if you would feel in danger, you instinctually cover up your torso because it has a lot of vital organs in it. So either you turn away or you cover it. So at some point she has her knees tucked up in front of her chest and then she hops behind the couch, which, which protects her torso completely. She has a moment to analyze it and realize maybe I'm not in danger and I should check out this situation. And so she pokes up and kind of looks over and like, what's actually going on here? So the free tool I want to tell you about is, oh my gosh, I forgot the name of the free tool. All right, well, it's up on screen right now. Also link in the description. It's this great camera rig, which is basically a jib. I've been animating my shots with just a Maya camera for the longest time. And when I was animating this shot, I noticed that when I was just trying to do a very simple ease in, since it was at a diagonal angle, I was fighting two different axes. So if you're animating an action shot and your character's running in a straight line, you wanna have the Z axis pointing in the direction of where they're running. So when you're in the graph editor, you know that Z is straight and X is the weight shifts from side to side. <laughs> and for an acting shot where someone's closer to the camera, Z is, the cam Z is back to the camera. So you know when you're animating the Z axis, you're going closer and further away and X is side to side. For some reason, I never thought of that when it came to cameras. Every control of this rig has one axis and they're all stacked. So you can rotate it and then there's another control inside that control, which is translate. And that's all that control does is Z. Each control takes care of a different axis. So when you're in the graph editor, you're never fighting Z and X to get your desired result. <laughs> oh, I have to go. I have to go. Oh, okay. Time flies. Yeah, but not fast enough. What? Not fast enough. What? Ugh, nothing. Love you. Good night. Oh, okay. Well, love you too. Good night. Mm -hmm. If you found this video helpful, there's a tip jar at the top of my channel page and in the description below. But I understand that money's tight, but subscribing is free and would really help out the channel. In my next video, I'm gonna be talking about how to get a job in the animation industry. Thanks for watching, bye.